coming back to school with me We could have done it all so easily Hi, my name is Craig Thompson Wood. I'm the board game teacher. Thanks for coming to the classroom. Today we're taking a look at Quirkle by Mindware. So looking at the report card for Quirkle, I give the number of players a B. Uh, it's the kind of game, it, it says, you know, two to four players. Um, and I think that's if you're playing Quirkle in the standard way. I think there's opportunities to play Quirkle in other ways, which I'll talk about in a little bit, which could then incorporate more players if you wish. But as the game, as it stands for the way it's played out of the box, according to the rule books, then you know, you're looking at two to four players. For the learning, I give this game a B plus. I think there's a lot of great things going on in this game, and that's why you can see there's, there's several different awards that this game has won by different um, institutions, such as the Mensa Select, the Major Fun Award, and the Parents' Choice Award, because it, it does such a great job of teaching and encouraging learning while being a fun game. Excuse me? For fun, I give this game a B. I think, you know, I was actually a little bit surprised. This is one of those games that kind of flew under my radar for a long time. I didn't give it too much mind. But certainly in looking to do this channel, looking to get more games into my classroom, I did pick up a copy of this game, and I was pleasantly surprised at how much fun it is. For time, I'm going to give this game a B+. Uh, to play the game in the standard way, which is, as the rules say in here, I think that it could be quite a long game, especially as you're thinking of your best moves and planning it all out and playing to the very end. It could take a long time, but who's to say you have to? I mean, it could always just be that you play up until a certain amount of time and making sure that everybody gets the same amount of turns. So if you say, okay, you can play for half an hour, start playing, and when the time's coming close, make sure that by the time you end that everybody's had the same number of turns, and then that way it's fair, and who cares if you didn't use every piece in the bag? You can just sort of see at that point who has the most points, and that can be one way to do it. There's also, as I'm saying, other ways to play the game, and those could be quicker ways too than the standard way to play, which can then again make it more adaptable to the game, hence the B+. For cost, I'm going to give this game a B+. I think that for the wooden pieces that you're getting in the game, now normally wooden pieces right off the bat are going to make the game more expensive. But the standard box of Quirkle only costs about $24. Um, so that's a very good price for the amount of pieces and everything you're getting in this game. For any sort of standard board game nowadays, $24 is a very good price. But what's more is that you could buy a travel version of Quirkle, and a travel version, which I don't have, uh, would only be about $16. So it's a smaller one, and it's used to, you know, I guess if you're playing on the go, like to if you're in a car, plane, traveling on a beach, whatever. It's just more portable. So a smaller version, less money, only $16. So I just want to say quickly too, I've been talking about the fact that there's other ways to play this game. I mean, if you're looking to maybe include this game in a primary classroom, now Quirkle as its regular form is great for teaching patterning, mathematics, shapes, fine motor skills, all kinds of different skills, which I've already mentioned in the sort of scrolling credits at the beginning of this uh, episode. But if you're looking to do something with the younger kids, you can still get a lot of those things with the color and shape recognition, fine motor, etc. But you could do it more as a like a memory game, you know, flipping over the things, just matching game. There's different ways to do it, and if you just look up online with Mindware, they have a whole series of lesson plans around their games including Quirkle, and how you can incorporate those into uh, your use in your own classroom. So I would highly recommend checking that out. So let's take a look at how this game is played. So when you open up your box of Quirkle, pretty much what you're going to find is this rule book and a bag. And inside the bag are lots and lots of these wooden tiles. And it's nice, I like the fact they're wooden tiles because, you know, less plastic, but also just nice durable pieces and, and good quality. So, when, in the game of Quirkle, what you're looking to do is you're looking to make patterns 
of shapes and colors. So if I want to put these three down, so say I start off the game and I'm putting these three pieces down, I score one point for every piece that's in this pattern. So I'm scoring one, two, three points, and I just keep a tally on a separate sheet of paper to show that I have three points. Now the, my, my opponent's going to start to look to, to add to, their, to the tableau in their own way, and they can either, if they say add one piece like so, then that would give them four points. Now what they could also do, if I put this down, they could put these down, so that way they're adding these X shapes, and the X shapes, the purple matches the purple, the X's match the X's. In this case then, they would score the four points for this row plus the three points for this row. So it becomes an opportunity to go in more than one way to score points if you can. Now what should be noted is that when you're matching you have to match in all directions. So if I go here I'm matching these clover shapes but I'm not matching the color here. So if I wanted to I could go like this and now I'm getting two points for there as well as the two points for there. And so you're always looking to maximize how many points you can get in a given turn by adding to the existing pattern. Everything always adds onto the pattern that's always already here. So as you, now in any, there are six different shapes and six different colors. So if you ever add these six different shapes, I'm just looking here now for a purple square. There we go. So here I have the six shapes in one row. Once a person puts the sixth shape in a row, so they get all six shapes in one row, that's called a quirkle, and a quirkle is worth 12 points. So even though there's only six in the row, you get double the points for completing it, so you get 12. Likewise, if you get all six colors, so if I get all six colors of the X's in a row, then likewise that is my quirkle for colors, making sure I have six colors, or if I have six shapes in one row. But so as you're going through, you see the fine motor in manipulating the pieces into the proper spots. You're looking at the colors, you're matching shapes, you're looking for patterns within, and you know, all the math of adding up the points as you go through is you know, the game. And you, know, you just continue playing this game and every turn you have a, a set of tiles before you and it's almost like Scrabble where you, you, know, you have your tiles, you hide those from the opponents so they don't know what you have, and you're putting them down onto the board replacing them as you go. Somebody described this game as Scrabble meets dominoes, and it's not far from that, you know, because you have your tiles and you're adding to an array, a, a, a thing that people are building together. And that's Quirkle. Well, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. If you have any questions about Quirkle, if you have any questions about anything going on in this channel, or just would like to maybe make some suggestions, please leave me a message in the comments section below. I always love to hear from the viewers. Until next time, I'm Craig Thompson Wood, the board game teacher, saying thanks for coming to the classroom. Are you coming back to school with me? We could have done it all.